Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Have you ever dreamed of having some shocking surprise completely change your life? Whether the surprise is good or bad, your life will never be the same again. I have a story to tell you about this very thing. My name is Tiffany, and I'm 21 years old. I live with my parents and an occasional mystery guest, whose role in our lives I have yet to ascertain. I would see him from time to time. I assumed that he was some down-on-his-luck guy whom Dad helped once. Dad was wealthy and often donated money to help the poor. This mystery man would try to talk to me whenever he would spend a few days with us. I didn't understand why Dad allowed him to stay at our home sometimes. It was bizarre, and it did creep me out a little. There was one time when he opened the door to my room while I was sleeping. He sat on the bed next to me for a while and then left. I was half awake at the time, but I didn't move. When I told my parents about this, they said they would speak with him, but I'm not sure they ever did. I felt uneasy about the situation, so I decided to investigate this matter myself. I had to figure out who this mystery man was, and why he stayed with us periodically. One day, Mom wasn't feeling well, and Dad drove her to the doctor's office to be checked out, leaving me home alone. I sneaked into the office to have a look around, see if I could find something about this strange man. While I was searching, I heard a voice behind me. I thought it was my parents, but it was the mystery man. He was smiling at me. It made me feel awkward. He said hi. I stepped back and said, If you take one step closer, I'll scream. He said, Calm down. You're suffering from an illness, and I need you to fight it for me, and for your parents. What are you talking about? I feel fine, I said. He said, You don't recognize me. I'm your husband. Shocked, I grabbed the phone to call the police, but he stopped me. Don't do that. I won't hurt you, but I won't leave either. I started screaming loudly. Just at that time, my parents returned and entered the study. I shouted for them to help me. Dad came over and hugged me. Then I felt a needle prick the back of my neck, and I lost consciousness. I woke up in a hospital bed, with my parents and my so-called husband beside me. I asked them what was going on. They told me that I must have been dreaming, that I had just woken up from a week-long coma, induced by a rare type of brain disease that damaged my long-term memory. My husband hugged me and told me that he loved me. If only I knew who he was. Friendship is not a word that is easily described. In fact, those who know the true meaning of it are scarce. It usually comes with a bond of trust that is not easily broken. The question is, can you believe in that bond till the very end, no matter what? My name is Sophie. I'm 21 years old. I used to live with my parents and my two siblings, Lena and Brian. Dad's an architect. Mom's a doctor. But she had to leave her job to take care of Brian and Lena because they were young and still needed her care and attention. And for a long time, so did I. As a kid, my parents were always worried about me. I didn't have any friends at school, and I was very shy. I would immediately cry when something happened, but all that changed when I met my guardian angel, Matilda. The way we met was somewhat bizarre. I did pretty well in my studies at school. I had hobbies, like art and music. Unfortunately, there was this one group of girls who liked to bully people like me. One day, in science class, I was carrying a project I was working on when those girls stopped me and tried to take my project. Just when I was about to cry and let them steal it from me, a girl appeared and told them to leave me alone or else they would have to deal with her. When they saw her, they looked frightened and left in a hurry. I didn't know the girl, but when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was a tall brunette with a beautiful smile. She took my project and held it for me because I was shaking and sobbing. Then she walked me to class and told me she would be back during break to check on me. As she was leaving, she called back to me and shouted that her name was Matilda and said that she would see me later. She did indeed come back during break. The clique of bully girls left me alone after that and kept their distance from Matilda as well. I asked Matilda why they were so afraid of her. She laughed and said it was a long story, but the short version was that she beat them up once and they became afraid of her, 
and stayed clear ever since. I asked her how she knew that those girls were always bothering me. She said it was pure coincidence that she had happened to be in the classroom the day they tried to take my project from me. She said that I looked so helpless that she decided to step in. I asked her to be my friend. She teared up a little and said, Of course. And from that day forward, we became the best of friends. I was cheerful every day now, and we grow closer and closer together. The happiest days of my life. Her story was unusual. Her dad was a boxer. Her parents split up because her mom couldn't stand the thought of him risking his life boxing every day, so she left. Her dad did his best to look after Maddie and her two little sisters. Then, one day, he was killed by thieves who robbed him as he was coming home from work, leaving Maddie to raise her siblings alone. This heavy responsibility matured her and toughened her character. She taught me to be bold, to love adventures. I feared nothing with her there. I dealt with situations decisively, without hesitation. We were like two separate halves of a ship sailing in the dark that happened to find each other one night and came together to complete each other. This was how I met Maddie, and our friendship grew stronger year after year. Maddie and her sisters were like my own sisters. We were all one big happy family, until something happened that disturbed the fabric of our universe. I enrolled in the College of Engineering, while she enrolled in a different college. The first year of college was difficult for me, because I missed Maddie so much. But then I tried really hard and focused on my studies. In my third year, I met Matthew, a player on the college basketball team. During that time, I was working for the college newspaper, and I was assigned to interview him. He was smart handsome, and had an inspiring story. His parents died when he was young, leaving him responsible for his younger brother, so he decided to work and earn money while pursuing his dream of being a basketball player. By the time we met, he had a chance to play in the NBA. We had a connection, and he proposed to me. I wanted to tell Maddie so badly, to share this wonderful news with her, but I couldn't. Maddie had completely disappeared that year, and I hadn't seen her at all. I didn't know where she was or how to reach her. Then, one day, I got a call from her. Her voice sounded distressed, maybe because her responsibilities were such a burden on her. Either way, I was glad she called. She seemed sad, and I asked her what I could do to help. I told her that I wanted to see her so we could catch up. She agreed and told me that we needed to get together soon. When we finally met, I saw that she had lost a lot of weight. I asked her why, and she replied that she was working while going to college. She wasn't looking after herself at all, but her eyes told another story. I told her about Matthew, and that we were getting married soon. She smiled, but her joy seemed affected somehow. I didn't know how to describe it. Perhaps it was the disconnected look in her eyes. I wanted to introduce her to Matthew, but apparently they had already met. They spoke politely to each other but there seemed to be something between them that made us all feel uncomfortable. I didn't know what it was. A while later, Matthew was always nervous about something. He always seemed to be busy with training or games, but was that all there was? At the same time, Maddie had started acting weird as well. Something was going on between them, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Whenever her phone rang, Maddie wouldn't answer or even look to see who was calling. Shortly before my wedding, Maddie had disappeared again without notice. Matthew went back to his normal self, and everything seemed to be fine. The wedding ceremony was going beautifully, until we got to the part where the preacher said, Anyone who saw a reason why this marriage should not take place, may they speak now or forever hold their peace. Well, it turned out that there was someone who saw a reason why this marriage should not take place, and that someone did speak up. And much to my amazement, it was Maddie. She shouted that Matthew was her fiancé, and that he had deceived her and left her for me. Matthew looked at her with a perplexed look on his face, as if this was news to him. I felt like time had shifted into slow motion. I had to be dreaming. I couldn't imagine why neither of them told me this before. I looked at Maddie and asked if it was true. She said, I'm done lying to you. I don't want to act anymore. Meeting you has been the most horrible thing that has ever happened to me. My life was going well till I met you. You got everything you wanted, even Matthew. He chose you instead. I was staring, 
lost for words. Tears started running down my face. Please leave, I said quietly. Maddie was crying too, yet she smiled and walked away. I didn't understand her behavior. Why did she smile as she walked out of my life? Days later, the answer revealed itself. Matthew and I knew each other well, and what happened at the wedding did not affect us at all. Still, I could see it in Matthew's eyes. He had something to tell me, and one day, he came inside the house with tears in his eyes. I asked what was wrong, if his family was okay. He nodded and said, They're all fine, Sophie, but there's something I've been wanting to tell you. During those times, when Maddie disappeared without warning, it was because she kept a secret from you. She had a terminal disease. She was dying. I was shocked. He continued and said that she had arranged the scene at the wedding to make me hate her so that when she died, I wouldn't feel grief or sorrow, that she had loved me so much. Soon after our wedding day, her disease took a turn for the worst, and she died. I was still standing in shock. He gave me the letter she wrote me. Dear Sophie, I'm sure that up to this point in time, you didn't understand my strange behavior, my sudden change. It was necessary to protect you from the shock of my death. I had no choice but to make you hate me. Don't be upset with me, dear Sophie. These are the last moments in my life, and I just wanted to tell you that I love you. Forever friends, Matilda. I cried like I never did before. I had lost my best friend. Dear Maddie, now I know the reason for your tearful smile when you left the wedding that day. You are still my one true friend. Not a moment has passed without thinking of you. Forgive me for not being there when you needed me most. You will always be in my heart.